we have 80 minutes to create two cheesecakes. <laughs> Your time starts now! No, 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 no. Cheesecake is a very classic dessert. Most people don't think of it as a savory opportunity, but I think that cheesecake really lends itself beautifully to savory ingredients. Did anyone take the lavender? And I would actually do a cheesecake that was all inspired by deep dish pizza. Wow. And the first thing that comes to my mind is Japanese. Wasabi, smoked salmon, and tempura batter. Wow. Jennifer, how are you? Oh, hey, Chef Claudio. Tell me, what are you making for your sweet cheesecake? OK, my sweet cheesecake is a chocolate cheesecake. The inspiration is a walk through the forest. Some spruce tips there, I see. Yeah, yeah, I'm just wow. uh, in the process of candying them a bit. Beautiful. What are you doing for your savory? I'm doing a everything bagel with urban garlic cream cheese. So I've taken a pastry cutter and placed it in the middle. That sounds like a great concept. My only concern is time management. But if you can pull yes. this off, you are definitely one to watch. Thank you, Chef. They need to get these cheesecakes into the oven as soon as possible, because not only do they have to cook the cheesecake, these cheesecakes have to come out of the oven and cool down before they can start thinking about assembling. OK. This is the moment of truth. If those cheesecakes are not set when they come out of the mold, no garnishes can save them. Yeah, Jenny. Good job, Jenny. Three minutes! Three more minutes left! Cheesecake's got to get out. OK, Colin is taking his cheesecake out right yeah. now. It looks, it looks, looks, it looks set. Keep it going, keep it going. Yep, this is it. Good job, Roz. One minute! Come on, guys. Come on, get those decorations on. Come on, just throw it on. Get it on. Good job, get it on. 10 seconds, time! Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one! Hands up! Good job, guys! Oh my god. Wow. I accomplished two cheesecakes in 80 minutes, which is on her own. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Wow. All of these cheesecakes look awesome. It's like I'm at the nicest cheesecake potluck that's ever happened. Home cooks, now it's time to see how you did. Jennifer, let's talk about the savory one. This is an everything bagel with urban garlic cream cheese cheesecake. Very original. Good on you for using that mold to create the hole in the middle of that bagel. Very, very ingenious. I actually quite like that. It really does have that bagel savoriness to it. The cheesecake itself has a very good palate feel. Very, very creamy. Oh, yay. Well done, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer, can you remind me of your concept here? This is a chocolate cheesecake, and I try to incorporate a lot of earthy elements. Ooh, it's a bit under. Uh, let's see how it tastes, though. This is really great. Great control with all the textures. And those spruce tips blended really well with the richness of the cheesecake. Amazing. Thank you, Chef. Your cheesecakes demonstrated a lot of ambition, but they didn't all work out as you'd hoped. But one of you stood out by wowing us with your creativity. Jennifer, that was you. Good job, Jen. Please, go up to the gallery. Good job. Good job. I feel like pressure makes diamonds, and these aren't, like, perfect diamonds or anything, but, like, I handled it. Oh, man, there's scales and everything. I decided to give Jennifer the Ebi Sudai. In the Mystery Box Challenge, her fish dish didn't get her called up, so let's see what happens. All right, guys, let's do this. Take apart a fish I've never taken apart before. I feel like I was playing it safe on the mystery box. 
<sighs> I just want to make sure I take calculated risks this time around. Have a good cook, everybody. Here we go. Okay. Let's do this. Alvin, do you think this challenge is going to be difficult with these Asian ingredients? Definitely. With luxury ingredients, less is more. You really want to showcase it. Christy, Jennifer is eating up a lot of valuable time right now butchering her fish. This feels embarrassing to say, like, as someone who comes from the East Coast, but I've literally never filleted a whole fish before. Hi there, Jennifer. <gasps> Hello, Chef Michael. <laughs> you got given the fish. Yes, I did. And you spent a fair bit of time removing the fillets. Yes, I did. I am making an Ebi Sudai carpaccio. I'm going to be deep frying the body as well and serving the carpaccio in the body. On the carcass? Yes, yes. That sounds a very interesting and uh, unique presentation. Do you think this could be a bit of a do-over after those fish cakes? Maybe. I'm excited for the opportunity to work with fish again. I love the positivity that you bring to every challenge. Thank you so Good much, luck Chef. And use that time wisely. Yes, Chef. OK, pal, one more dunk. I've never deep fried a fish carcass before, so I have no idea what I'm doing. And I am doing it just by eye. We'll see what happens. I tell you, if you're only serving the fish, there's nowhere to hide. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! I'm not feeling the best. I wanted to put some more sauce on top, but I just didn't have time. I tried to just focus on the fish, not do a whole, whole lot to it. I'm quite nervous. Jennifer, please bring your dish to the front. This is, hands down, the most nervous that I've been, because it's a whole carcass on a plate, and that's all. This is an Ebi Sudai carpaccio and I've made a sauce with some chili, lime, garlic, ginger, and cilantro, and I've served it in the fried body. Six seasons, I've never seen anything like this. That's a good thing. Oh, okay. Thank you, Chef. It's pretty amazing. The seasoning, it's just perfectly balanced. Wow. Last challenge. You struggled this challenge, you're back in the game. You have incredible skill. Thank you so much, Jeff. You know, you hit it on the spot. <sighs> the texture was perfect. The way that you preserve and reuse the carcass of this fish I am deeply touched because Asians don't like to waste anything. This is how we are so crazy rich. <laughs> now, you know in Asia, only the honor guests of the table gets to sink their teeth into this. The eyeballs. Today, I think the person to be honored is you. Are you sure? Yes. Thank you very much, Chef. You have certainly honored this beloved Asian ingredient. You did it justice. I'm touched. Thank you, Chef. You can float back now. Yeah, oh my god. Dear diary, today I got to eat an eyeball on MasterChef Canada. We're making a pemmican-inspired corn and bison. Pemmican was an indigenous way of preserving food that you could take with you if you had to go out hunting for a very long time. It would be traditionally meat, dried berries, like nuts, often corn. So we're just really celebrating all of the ingredients that would have originally gone into something like that. Andre's gonna work on some bison later, and I'm working on the corn. Chef Joel has given us mandamin. It's a white corn, and I think tying it in with like the pemmican idea is really special. So I'm working on our dessert right away. So right out the gates, I start making a squash cake before I can start with the bison because I know that will take a while. It's all about time management. I need to get this cake done like yesterday. You got this, bud. Wow, <laughs> it smells delicious. OK, describe your first course. What are you doing? We're doing um, a pemmican-inspired uh, bison and corn. Nice. Have you ever cooked bison before? Never, chef. OK, feel that. What's that telling you right now? 
Feel that. Yeah. Feel that. That's well done. What's that? That's rare. That's rare. Okay. So I got to be in the middle. Pay attention to your food. Okay. Even cut a little piece. Look inside of it. Take a peek and see what's happening. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good luck. How is it? Oh yeah, a little longer. A little longer. Yeah. yeah. There's five minutes left. I got to put it back in the pan and start basting some more. Cutting it really close. Home stretch. Come on. Flip over. There you go. These are taking forever to fry. Uh, cook, cook, cook. With two minutes remaining, both teams must now start plating their first course. Oh, you know what? I have to make that sauce. Do you stock and wine? I realized I forgot to start making that sauce. So I throw some stock in and I start reducing it down. This dish is going to be the judge's first impression. It's do or die. I need to make this sauce in under a minute. Tastes good. OK, I'm going to strain it off and I'm going to yep. pour it in. Awesome. This is such a huge privilege to cook for luminaries of indigenous cuisine. I just really hope they like it. Amazing job, Andre. Awesome job. All right, okay. round one. So what do you have in front of you from the blue team is a corn chowder with smoked cheddar and corn fritter. And from the red team, a pemmican-inspired bison with corn. So please enjoy. I am very, very impressed. These dishes look like they came from a professional kitchen. The red team, the pemmican-inspired corn. I'm a huge fan of Iroquois white corn, and it's front and center. It was incredible. I agree. On the red team, they've really done a good job with the white corn. You really do get the smokiness. Whereas I feel with the blue team's dish, the white corn is featured, but you don't quite get that from this particular dish. The soup on the blue team, the flavor profile and the seasoning is a bit weak. I think it needs to be amped up in the actual flavor of corn, something to just give it another layer. I think the uh, red team, lots of flavors coming from the bison, but I would have preferred probably a little bit more rare. Chef Wolfman, could you tell us your thoughts on the blue team's corn chowder? The corn chowder reminds me of the soup that my mom would make. A, a very simple, but it tastes like home. Now, the corn fritter here, you can see that the outside's a little bit dark and the inside looks a bit chalky. But the flavor and the seasoning is very precise. It really hits all those notes. Who doesn't love a good hot chowder and a corn fritter? Gorgeous. All right, so I'm going to grab the partridge. OK, awesome. I'm going to move on to the beans. For our second course, we're doing partridge in a nest of sour cherries and beans. We're hoping this plate tells a story of a partridge, you know, in its little nest. I like having stems on my beans. How do you feel about it? I like them, too. Keep it rustic, yeah? OK, cool. I like them all. The bean is the main star, but the partridge is going to accompany it. I got to get these birds in ASAP. I got to move fast with these partridges because I got to get them roasted. So I do not have time to cut this bird up into little pieces. So I'm just basically chopping it straight down into halves. I'm going to literally uh, treat these beans as though they're like a steak and like butter baste them. Oh, yeah, perfect. The treatment we're giving to the beans is to butter baste them to really kind of bring out their more like earthy elements. No, I, I like them whole, man. Yeah, no, I like them too. I love the great outdoors. One of my fondest early food memories is fishing with my dad. He passed away when I was 20. Being here and using all these really special ingredients and just seeing how far I've come, he would have loved this. Oh, do they look good? We got this. I've never cooked a partridge before. Oh, I definitely do not want to let my team down. Okay. Thanks very much, you guys. Woo! So the second course from the red team is roasted partridge with sour cherry gastrique and a bean nest. From the blue team, we have venison medallions, three bean salad, and pickled cinnamon cap mushrooms. Let's dig in, shall we? I think on the red team, just feels a little bit more sort of rustic and homey and simple. Counter to that, the blue team, I think there's some elegance to the plating. I like the balance of this dish. You have the beans, still has this crunch. The berries provide the acidity, so one working with the other. Now, the venison is slightly overcooked, but still, for me, it's not bad. 
On the red team, the partridge is delicious, lots of great flavor. The beans, however, you can see that they weren't uh, cleaned properly, which is a problem. For the red team, when I think of Indigenous hospitality, Indigenous food, it, I think very approachable. This is how we would eat it, right here. But the beans could use a little bit of work. For the beans to be a featured ingredient, I think Blue Team really did a great job. I had to like cut off the ends of my beans to eat them off of the red team. Thank you for the feedback. Last push, last round. It's all sweet stuff. We got this. So with this third course, we have a squash cake with a tempered chocolate bark on the side. And we're gonna finish it off with some juniper pastry cream. Wait, I already have the cake done, dude. Yep. We start big. Andre has the cake already done. I'm gonna get started on the juniper pastry cream. Like, Andre's gonna start making some chocolate bark. So I'm using a brush so I can get the bark lines onto the chocolate. We're still sticking with the outdoors theme, and I want this chocolate to look like tree bark. This is the third and final course. Everything has to be perfect. We gotta get this cooled down quick. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, this cake is nice. I'm gonna follow you with the pastry cream, okay? Perfect. I'm mega proud of us. We had such a joy of a time cooking together, and I think that really showed in our food and on the plates. I'm gonna follow you this way, okay? I'd be extremely devastated if we'd lose this one. So, let's get on to the third course from the red team. We have a birch and squash cake with tempered chocolate bark, candied squash, and juniper pastry cream. And from the blue team, a deconstructed bannock bread pudding with a squash mousse and candied squash. Well, let's dig in. What I first of all notice is the plating styles have flipped. The red team has gone with a more sophisticated plating, whereas I felt their bean course was much more rustic. On the blue team, plating is much more sort of homey and simple. Visually, these are probably my favorite plates. The blue team's plate, the squash in the puree, you can taste it. Candy squash, also a nice touch. I love the texture from the bannock. I just love the complexity. The red team, at first I thought, gee, the cake might look a little on the dry side, but oh no, it was beautiful and moist. The flavors of this slightly bitterness from the chocolate was just absolutely wonderful. I agree. I like the chocolate with the squash, something I never really thought would go. I'm really liking this. Chef Mandy, what are your comments on the third course? I don't know which one I like better. They did a good job on both of them. You know, you're all our guests today, and I'm very proud. I think that they have really risen to a new level in the kitchen tonight, and you can see it with these two desserts, both extraordinary. I think we can all agree that was a terrific meal. Now let me introduce you to the talented home cooks who made it. I know I speak for all of us in saying that it has been a true honor cooking a meal for you tonight with these very special ingredients. Now, the home cooks are probably eager to find out which team wins this challenge. Yes, yes chef. chef. But we're not announcing it until tomorrow back at the MasterChef Canada kitchen. <laughs> In the meantime, why don't you come and meet the guests that you just cooked for? You know, it's a table of all chefs. Wow. Everyone's a chef. <laughs> we're home cooks. Like, we're rookies. And these are, like, luminaries of Indigenous cuisine who just ate our food. See, so great job. Thank you. I'm just so grateful. Thank you. The team that earns a pass to the top three is... The Red Team. <laughs> We just put so much care into that meal. I'm just so grateful that they liked what we did. Andre and Jennifer, head up to the gallery. Okay. Thank you. Good job, guys. I feel extremely grateful to make it this far. And we're automatically top three. Oh, my gosh. I eat what some might consider to be an outrageous amount of cheese. Oh, broccoli. But I have never eaten or cooked with Avonlea cloth-bound cheddar. The steaks are mega high and kind of scary. This cheese is unreal. 
Avonlea cheese is wrapped and then aged in the ground in PEI, so the minerals from the soil actually work their way in there. It smells like potatoes and also tastes like potatoes. For the first dish, I was thinking kind of like chips and dip. That's what the potatoes made me think of. So I'm making gorgières. Gorgières are like a savory cream puff. And then I have an idea, like broccoli and cheese, man. It's like so classic. So crispy cheddar and broccoli. And then I'm just gonna finish it off with a tart tatin. So to make a tart tatin, you put apples into a good hot cast iron pan with butter and sugar and let them caramelize. Then the pastry crust goes on top and then into the oven for it to finish off baking. Oh, right. For the broccoli and cheese, I have put in butter, breadcrumbs, and a whole bunch of the cheddar. And on top of that, I layer the broccolini. I actually think the broccoli and cheese dish is the weakest link in Jennifer's lineup of three dishes. Doesn't sound like it's ambitious enough. This dish is, like, so simple, but I want to do something really kind of classic, but do it really, really well. I can smell the cheddar, um, so that's caramelizing. 30 minutes! You have 30 minutes left. For the tart tatin, I've added a bit of cheddar to my crust. It has, like, a nice brown on it. I feel hopeful. Getting the tartin out of the mold can be quite tricky. That caramel is so thick, it can quite easily stick to the pan. When I've made tart tatin at home, I've never had, like, a perfect execution. It feels promising. Jennifer is just about to flip her tart to ten. It's the moment of truth right here. Ooh, OK. Oh, some of the apples are actually sticking to the bottom of her pan. <sighs> I just want to fix this as fast as I can. One minute, you have one more minute. Get going, get going. Josh hasn't even started plating. This is going to be so close. What am I missing? Come on, let's go, let's go! Holy heck. It's good, that's good. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Heads up! Wow. Let's see how you did. Jennifer, can you please bring up your dish to the front? I know it's not up to me, but it sure would be cool if this were awesome enough to get me to the finale. I've made cheddar gougeres, and I've made a crispy cheddar broccoli with some bacon, and a tart tatin with a cheddar pastry. Jennifer, you love cheese, don't you? <laughs> that is true, chef. I like the concept. You took simple things, and you added cheese to it. And this is the take, I guess, on cheese and broccoli, right? Yes, sir. Cook is perfect. You get that sweetness coming from the broccoli, and then you get that sharp hit from the cheese itself. You got the balance of flavor, the seasoning is right. Well done. Thank you, chef. I get to try your apple tatin. Let's see how this tatin cuts. That's a good sound. What I see is a nice, light golden color on that pastry. It is very, very good. That apple has become so molten and soft, and there's enough of that savory cheese element that adds just a touch of saltiness to it. This is an excellent rendition of a classic French tatine. Thank you, chef. So tell me about these gougeres. I was trying to capture some of that potatoey flavor near the rind, so it's in the batter. And then I think chips are always best with dip, so it's just some spicy honey and uh, some grapes and pine nuts. The question here is, is there enough beautiful cheddar in your gougeres? What do you think? I think so, chef. I'm not too sure you really nailed it. OK. It doesn't feel like the bat flip level home run I have felt a couple other times in the kitchen, but it feels like I did a good job. Interpreting one ingredient three different ways is a tremendous challenge. 
and each one of you rose to it. A one home cook told a more cohesive story in terms of flavor, technique, and presentation. And that home cook who has earned a place in the MasterChef Canada finale is... Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer, please come up here and get your chef's jacket. Okay. <laughs> I'm cooking in the finale. Putting the chef's jacket on is so cool. This is such a singular experience. That kind of enjoyment and meaning and working so hard at something you care about, it's just precious. Good job. I can tell whether or not things are done usually by feel. I hope I nailed it. How's my time, guys? Five minutes, five, five minutes. minutes. Keep going, keep going. What was that, Jennifer? A uh, red wine demi-glace. Wow. I'm gonna add some of that uh, sour cherry syrup to it. I am brushing these lamb bones with some of the glaze and wrapping them in copper foil. It's finale day, why wouldn't I? Two minutes, you only have two more minutes left. I'm pretty close, I'm pretty close. It's looking good, bro, looking good. Watch your time. Go, Andre, go. How you doing, man? I think I'm doing well. What are you gonna do with the cabbage? The cabbage is what they're gonna eat it out of, so they're gonna wrap it and put it in the cabbage. Oh, okay. One minute, you only have one more minute to Andre time. Look at those dishes. Wow. Oh, that looks so delicious. Thanks, guys. Nice, Jennifer. Oh, my God. Wow. Ten, you got it, buddy. Nine, you got it. Eight, eight, seven, six, four, five, four, three, two, one. And it's up. That's it. Yes. Don't let up now, because dessert is going to be served in one hour. The judges will now head to the banquet room to taste the entrees. Okay, Bolsam has probably never been seen like this before. I think the judges will really like it. At the start of this, I thought this dish might be a bit impossible because there was just so many elements, but it did all come together. I just really hope they love it. Jennifer's entree is up first. It's a braised lamb shank served with hay smoked oats, sour cherry glaze, and a mint fleece. I always love a story in a dish. It evokes the sort of whimsy of that nursery rhyme. It is eye-catchingly colorful. And this right here, this mint fleece, it is so unusual, very smart. Oh, boy. This lamb is undercooked. It's slightly rare. Oh, man. Claudio, that's too bad, because my piece of lamb is beautifully cooked, tender and juicy. Mine was also cooked perfectly. I think we have to consider that both of you had smaller shanks than mine. But the vegetables, for me, are really the star of the show. They're so complex. The carrots perfectly cooked, the oats with that smoke going through them. Sensational. I love that combination of meat, fruits, vegetables, starch all coming together. And the thing is, everything fits. And then you got that plump cherry giving acidity, bit of that juice balancing with sweetness. And finally, I love that mint fleece. There is such a lot of detail in this dish. It's a really good one. Oh, that's nice. The home stretch. I really hope that the judges enjoyed what I made for them. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh my god, I really wish I could hear what the judges said about my dishes. I know I did them well, so hopefully they see that. These home cooks have been cooking solidly for two hours. That pace has been brutal. They cannot lose that momentum right now. It's crucial. It comes down to this very last dish, dessert. Is that rice? Yeah, yeah. You're puffing the rice? Oh, that's so cool. Oh, nice. Jennifer's doing a take on sugary breakfast cereal. 
I love breakfast cereal. Many a chef finish their night with a bowl of sugary cereal. It's more Saturday night than Saturday morning. Good. Puffy. If I'm going to serve the judges treat cereal in the finale, I better make sure that there's some good technique in that bowl. Let's see what happens here. I'm making a chocolate crumble, meringue marshmallows, a sugar cured egg yolk with a brulee, chocolate ganache, and tea smoked milk. Jennifer, Hello, okay, tell me. You? You know, why tea smoked milk? Something that I think is so nice after a meal is a sweet and a tea. And I use my favorite tea, which is birthday cake flavored. I just think it pairs really well with this. You got a lot going. You got a lot of treats coming. I can't wait to taste this. Yes, chef. How do you think of smoking milk? Oh, I don't, I don't know what happens in there. Really. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't yeah. I'm just flipping the sugar cured egg yolks to make sure they all get enough time in the sugar. Putting it under the sugar, it creates a light skin around that egg yolk so it doesn't burst. I'm going to melt some sugar and do a little brulee on top of it for a bit of crunch. Nice. Woo! 10 minutes, 10 minutes left for dessert. Keep going, keep going. It is neck and neck in this kitchen right now. Looks great, Jennifer. Just to see Jennifer in her element doing what I've always known her capable of doing is amazing. Woo! Wow! Look how soft that ice cream is that Andre's scooping out. It looks gorgeous. Whoa, let's go. Wow. These dishes look pretty incredible to me. Yes, Jennifer. 15 seconds. Finish strong, finish strong. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And on. How amazing. That was incredible. <laughs> I've literally given everything into this cook. Like, I'm super wiped and I'm super pumped that I just finished it. Yeah, you did it! Oh my gosh, that happened. That happened! I'm so proud of myself. We did it! You did it! Wow. We were. Now it's time to taste your final course. Please follow us into the banquet room. Come on in. I feel so grateful and excited. Like, the emotional <laughs> the roller coaster doesn't quite capture it. Jennifer, please describe your dessert. Tonight, I've made one of my favorite dishes, treat cereal. There's a chocolate soil in the bottom. I've puffed a variety of different rices. I've made some marshmallow meringue. There's a chocolate ganache bed for the sugar-cured egg yolk. And I've tea-smoked milk. This isn't just a dessert, this is an experience. Oh. <laughs> wow. Jennifer, that first mouthful is a bit of a mystery as to what's in there. The second mouthful, it starts to define each flavor and texture. That subtlety of the smoke of the milk, that rich, complex flavor of the ganache, the texture of the puffed rice. There's something grown up about it. If there was one adjustment, one caveat, mm -hmm. I would like just a little more sweetness. But it really is a tremendous dessert. Thank you, Chef. All these sweet cereals that I missed as a kid, the ones I crave, I recognize it all here. So my dream has come true, but in a sophisticated adult way. Oh, thank you, Chef. This dessert is absolute creativity. It's somebody who's really mastered technique, flavor. You can't teach this. This is one of the most original desserts I've ever had. Thank you, Chef. I kind of just wanted to give them some of the sense of wonder I have felt the entire time I was here. I'm just so happy. <laughs> It is my last day here, and it's the first day that I've entertained the thought of, what if I win? This is not swing. <laughs> I'm so nervous. The suspense is killing me, honestly. Jennifer and Andre, 
Those chef's jackets that you're wearing are a symbol of what you've accomplished and of where you're going. A career in food is unfolding for both of you. Both of you made incredible meals that we felt privileged to eat. In the end, we decided that one of you took us on a culinary journey that cannot be denied. That home cook will win $100,000, this trophy, and the life-changing title. This year's winner and Canada's new master chef is... Jennifer! Oh my god, I am Master Chef Canada. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so I finally figured out what I want to be when I grow up. Or like not totally grow up, but you know, I figured out what I want to do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a winner, honestly. I'm not leaving with the trophy, but I'm leaving with a million skills, new friends, and a new path. You did amazing, Mike. Thanks, Alyssa. be so proud. I'm definitely not scared to step into the culinary world anymore. Just can't wait to go on it with my dad. It's going to be great. <laughs> This whole thing has felt like such a fairy tale for me. I have so much gratitude for like every single part of this. 